Well, uh, a very good morning. Whether we're fit, well, that's a different question. Some were uh, in bed on time, others uh, only when the sun rose, <laughs> as I heard. So let's try to make the best of it uh, at 10 in the morning. My name is Fabian Fischer, and uh, I have been responsible for distribution, marketing, and business development at Nexoma since 2018. I was taken along by our CEO and owner of Nexoma, Guido Sauerland, and uh, we have picked a topic revolving around uh, one of our customers. We have a few uh, more uh, customer cases which we unfortunately had to censor because that customer um, does not display any information because this is not front-end technology and they pursue a very strict policy. Um, nobody is to talk about it. But our customer, Hellemann Titan, um, um, was uh, prepared to um, provide an example, a sample case. And what we want to share today is the Mach principles, or rather the principles that the Mach Alliance came up with and how we've used this in the context of product data. I hope that many are interested in this. <laughs> well, well, we'll see whether we can uh, fulfill the expectations here. Well, uh, I don't think I have to comment on this. Uh, this is where we're located. <laughs> We've been around since 2010 and we look at product data on a daily basis and how to transport uh, product data into PIM systems and how do we get them out and how do we distribute them and we're print integrated otherwise we would not have been invited. We have uh, w uh, the supplier portal and Catalog Express. These are our own products and this was basically our uh, selling you our shop window. Um, at our end, um, we uh, refer to this as the uh, content supply chain. I think this is clear to everyone here. Everybody uh, has to do with PIM, uh, whether it's the Excel spreadsheet or um, uh, the real PIM database and an ERP system. And when you're a dealer, then you are tasked with uh, cooperating with some of the suppliers and, and to bring the data in. And both manufacturers and dealers are tasked with preparing data in such a fashion that uh, we can actually distribute them to various marketplaces, channels, and can sell at web stores. Well, exactly. Uh, uh, Mach or the Mach Alliance, I think this term is uh, known, otherwise you wouldn't have come here. <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten, I've forgotten the, the principles, fine. Um, after all, the Mach Alliance is an alliance of uh, companies um, that uh, um, deal with technologies and uh, have come up with principles that should be designed or should help to uh, make companies future fit proof. Uh, Akineo, for instance, is included, or MongoDB, or Google, for instance, uh, ABS. Um, I think it's 80 companies. Uh, um, that uh, are in technology partnerships or are consultants and uh, part, uh, form part of this alliance. At quite expensive. Yeah, I read this. Uh, um, and I think it's pretty exciting that um, when you look what's underlying, that you do an alliance and then actually issue certifications. That's quite exciting. We actually had exciting discussions about this yesterday. Do we need it after all? The principles, yes. The certification, well, you, this is questionable. But maybe we can discuss this a little later um, and, and have your views on this. So what are the Mach principles? We talked about the alliance, uh, but what are the principles? Mach means uh, microservices A, like APIC, like Cloud Native, and H in headless. So what we understand by it uh, will be explained in a minute because we always provide you with examples to make it more graspable. Otherwise, it is very techy-like. 
at Hellemann Titan. Well, for Hellemann Titan, I'll uh, pass the floor to you. Hellemann Titan is uh, one of our long standing customers. Uh, um, we've uh, serviced them for roughly 20 years, so longer than uh, the Nexoma has existed. So it was already a customer for my previous companies, and I took them with me when I established Texoma. It's an international uh, manufacturer. Um, represent in roughly 40 countries, everything revolving around cable and cable ties. But when I say cable ties, um, then they're always annoyed because they do everything around it, uh, rounding it. They even have the machines producing whole car cable harnesses and all of the other accessories. It's quite exciting to see the technologies. Um, and um, we uh, produce uh, for them not the print catalogs, no. What we produce for them is all of the electric electronic uh, catalogs that we ship to the countries, multilingual item classifications and the like. These are the things that we do for Helmand Heidmann or with Helmand Heidmann. They have roughly 80,000 products, uh, depending on the country. This uh, number varies and different ranges for different countries. This means different data for different countries. And when they generate catalogs, then they are usually have to do it um, quickly and they have to generate many at once so there's lots of work to be processed by the systems and this will actually be important when I talk about the Mach principles later so we always have to be uh, close to the uh, screen says the cameraman so what are the challenges for Hellemann Titan um, there are more and more customer requirements to issue a catalog and the same catalog for each and every one no longer works. And this is one of the reasons why Helm and Titan approached us and they said we need help because the export from the PIM system alone is not sufficient. We need to uh, personalize for customers and this trend is growing and it varies by country. Even with ATIM, it's this, their country specifics, but their customers saying, well, the first image has to have a cropping feature. Uh, otherwise don't send further images um, uh, we do it um, the customer needs to be happy and uh, should have perfect data so that the customer can sell perfectly all right this trend is increasing in the past uh, we actually sent out a catalog once a year or when uh, customers requested it but now uh, people want to actively approach customers and be quick on the market this is why frequency is rising I just said uh, they are an international player and there's also more and more going on internationally. Initially, it was mainly focused on Europe. Uh, today, um, BME ICAT is of importance uh, for a country such as Africa, which was not the case before. Of course, we have multilingual catalogs, uh, whether it's the uh, contents of one catalog in several languages or whether there's country-specific attributes for products. All of this is happening there. Assets are also individual, not only country-specific, even customer-specific. They're product-specific information uh, that are uh, only retrieved for specific customers. And one of the most important thing, and this is why we came up with this topic today, is that the customers want to have this data in real time. So please give me the data on this product and now. And just the way I want it, individualized, personalized. Uh, are you online? Yeah, okay, great. Um, and then we will show you uh, live what this uh, could look like in a system and how you can personalize uh, very easily. So much for the background uh, for Hellemann Tideman, what really uh, uh, counts to them and what are the needs and challenges for them. And then we said, okay, let's check it uh, and reconcile it uh, with other challenges and uh, compare it with the Mach principles. And we will actually walk you through the individual principles now and see, uh, and we'll start with the microservices and see uh, what are the customer requirements underlying it and what does it mean when we look at uh, microservices. 
there is no hard definition for microservices. Uh, we used to have a monolithic system, but now we break it down into individual little tasks, little services that can I interact with each other. So the task is to orchestrate these services and connect these services later. And when you take a closer look at this, it looks like this. In uh, the uh, framework of product data, there can be various building blocks. Um, this can be ERP, but when we actually view this from our perspective of product data, then this is just a data source uh, where I get information from. Uh, from my view, from my product data view, this is just a service that I can retrieve data. Same for PIM with the assets, for instance. But this can also be a service um, 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 in the way of a REST API. When I have a service, then it also has an API uh, to actually access it. But uh, 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 data checks, uh, I can use an API, I can send my data there, then the data is checked and I get the checked data back. The same happens when I upload to Amazon. I have funny APIs there, not always perfectly documented, not always 100% correct, but they can afford it. And they also provide services, whether I upload something to Shopware or I whether I use data mapping. Um, there are various services that I can use and that I uh, later uh, can orchestrate. And what's happening next? I'm building various applications on the basis of this. So I take various of these services uh, and combine them with various configurations to get a, a new application. And such applications can differ. Uh, they can vary depending on how you want to configure them. As an example, um, if uh, we want to upload data from Amazon, then we need PIM data, we need ERP data, a data check. Um, we would like to have a reporting whether this has all worked after uploading the data and there's mapping as well because uh, the data needs to be converted to Amazon format and we need a workflow so that we can actually process the individual steps and at the end the data is uploaded. So this is how I combine individual microservices and basically build my program with them. This can be various uh, things. We can also orchestrate it in a completely different way, combining other uh, information and, do, and convert it into an asset downloader and include a UI because uh, we didn't have a UI before. Here, a UI is included and we take data from the PIM and assets and uh, later uh, want to make them available as a download. So I build another application, although I use the same components. The PIM service uh, is used here as well and uh, it, it is made available for various applications. What does this look like now? This is all uh, looking a little technical. This is what a download portal could look like. So these are the products and they can be downloaded. And uh, in the background, there are various services that are being used. And this is the difference. For such different services, uh, um, uh, they can be scaled. Uh, this is the big benefit of these services. There is not one big monolithic application that I uh, have to scale up. No, I have little microservices that can be individually scaled. If I have trans to transform images, for instance, that takes a lot of uh, um, computing capacity and then I can combine computing capacities that uh, actually boost that service, whereas other services that are not uh, used are neglected. Headless? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, I said before uh, that uh, these uh, topics are of course interrelated. When I have such microservices then they talk to each other uh, via an API which brings me to the next segment uh, quadrant. Um, what's the logic behind APIs when we talk about product data? When we think in terms of products, then we think uh, as API first. 
So we first design the API and then we start programming. This has several benefits because those who have to talk to the API or have to provide the API can work in parallel. Otherwise, it would have to be a step process. But when I think API first, then you actually do the API uh, first and then uh, uh, programming can be done in parallel. What's far more um, uh, exciting is I want to make this data available for my customers or have a service where the customer gets the data uh, just the way he needs them. Uh, Content Surf can do the same thing. Uh, so we design an API that a customer has access to and um, then uh, you actually provide a service with a view to the customer. Uh, at Telemann Titan, for instance, a customer of theirs actually says from Scandinavia, well, I would like to have your data in real time. So there is this uh, king customer saying, well, from you, I need your data, my data in real time. And Kellerman Titan says, yes, we have the data. There is this big PIM system. Then this is, uh, there is a small uh, additional ERP system. And in actual fact, uh, there are even the, just, uh, the sales guys uh, with prices. And they still use spreadsheets. We know that. But there is a possibility uh, to do some content enrichment, including an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, this data is to be sent to the customer as a package. Uh, of course, you don't want the customer to access the ERP system direct. Many um, don't want to grant them direct access to the PIM system. So there must be something in between um, uh, that allows the customer to access the data somewhere in between. Probably the process is slowed down, but um, um, when we actually have such a case, then we actually create a mapping service, a surface in between, a UI, and we marry this data now and make it available for King Customer. And we will have a, like, uh, a live look at this later. And at this point, we provide the customer with the data uh, through a predefined API. And it would, in this particular case, it's in JSON, but it could also be a different format. What's really key here is uh, that I don't say, well, this is the data, uh, make the best of it. No, we also simultaneously generate an open API description or technical description of what the API looks like. This helps the customer to um, actually structure their applications more easily because uh, the data structure is exactly the same. These are the different endpoints. This is the functions that I can save. And this is what we make available for the customer so that customers find it easy to work with this data. So much for this. And we will look at this live to see the speed a little later. And uh, let's look at the uh, third quadrant. I said that it is exciting to have the various services uh, that can be scaled individually. Uh, pushing data to the cloud, uh, many people think, yeah, we'll place them on the saver in Una. This is not a cloud solution. Cloud means that uh, this is a breathing application. When we have a system processing um, uh, product data for a catalog generation, then these processes may take a few hours. And when we do 100 at the same time, then the, uh, the systems are pretty busy. But the days afterwards, nothing happens on those systems. The systems basically could go to sleep and I could s uh, switch the server off and uh, it can go to rest. But this is, of course, not happening. But this is what is what cloud technology is for. So the system is there to fulfill your minimum requirements. And if there's a customer that actually needs data processed, or if the sales guy says, oh, my customer needs new data and the data is uploaded, then the uh, computing capacity is to be ramped up and quickly and do more uh, than the usual computer or mainframe can do. 
so that uh, this scalability is really achieved. And this is the exciting point. And here, cloud makes sense. Um, some people say, yeah, we put it to the cloud and it's even expensive. But if I properly leverage the cloud uh, the way I describe it, um, uh, then I don't pay for the times that I don't use the capacity. I do, of course, have to pay a lot when the systems uh, work. But uh, when I actually uh, pay less for the times that the cloud is not used, then such cloud services pay off. That's exciting. Yes, of course. How would I have to uh, define the requirements for the hosting? What would I have to say uh, to achieve this? Speakers not using a microphone. Well, you have to make, uh, you have to be aware of your needs, of your requirements, and your reputation. You have to know how often is this really running. You have to analyze the system, see how often are those processes really handled, and then I can already see which capacities are needed. And if I really have an application that is capable of breathing, because there are many applications that can't breathe, then it doesn't help you. Well, you get as much as you need and you're done. But if the application can breathe and is paralyzed for such um, catalog processes and can add computing capacity, then it makes sense. The most important thing is that you really know your application. How much is needed? How often is it used? How, how often do you trigger it? And uh, what is the, is the status Kill, what do you expect for the future? And um, the Helm and Titan started with uh, 12 uh, um, catalog or electronic catalog productions per year. I don't know how many hundred they do th today. Uh, these are things uh, that grow over time, but you have to be aware of the, uh, have to be aware of your application. What is the system? It's for the application. And on the other hand, comment off the mic again. The processor infrastructure. Today, um, uh, you, there are possibilities to try the application and then actually extrapolate it. Cloud native is uh, given here because this is more than this. Uh, uh, cloud native means that I can actually uh, use any cloud platform regardless of the name. Uh, no, this was the other one. Oh, that's the... Uh, AI. AI actually... <laughs> um, uh, actually stole my uh, um, uh, Azure Cloud uh, logo. Uh, whether it's my own cloud or the Azure Cloud or whatever, when you actually place a Kubernetes cluster there, they work in different ways. But cloud native means that I can push it anywhere from add-on to Google or to my own cloud makes no difference and it has to work and actually build the application correspondingly. It takes some some knowledge. Uh, the charming thing is uh, that it uh, saves costs. If you say the cloud provider is too expensive, I don't need that, or um, I want a provider, a cloud provider that is only based in Germany and operating in Germany, um, and uh, then I have to be flexible, flexible enough with uh, my software to actually work with these. An image of the layout. When you look at the computing capacity, this is the uh, capacity utilization. Uh, there's nothing happening, and then all of a sudden, uh, lots is happening at the same time. But in the rest of the time, I can save the server capacity and the costs for it. And for the peaks, um, uh, the costs are worthwhile. So, um, you would have to study uh, how to organize this best for you. With many providers, um, uh, they offer software as, as a service. Um, but for a provider or for user, it is uh, interesting nevertheless to see um, uh, when I have hundreds of customers, um, it makes sense. They share the capacities and it makes much more sense than hosting everything in-house. Um, they would have to invest a lot more energy. Um, um, uh, it is a lot better if we say we share the capacities that we have among the various customers. Exactly. 
And now, soon over to you, your area. Yes, last quadrant, headless. This means um, um, seeing that uh, um, applications also work without a uh, direct uh, operator. I have to be able to control this without somebody actually sitting in front of a screen. So I have to be able to start without a UI. It can be trivial things, it can be time controlled control, but this is headless as well. But uh, you could also say um, the regular price updates or the inventory updates uh, uh, that you have to plan for Amazon Web Shops. Um, these are processes that are simply time controlled. Very trivial things. What's it more exciting to see is um, when such uh, applications uh, are built uh, for customers um, that help you to generate catalogs in a headless way. They no longer have a user interface from us. They could activate it, but they don't need it. They have their own portals. They have their own software where this is all embedded. And when you imagine such a customer who wants this, uh, and then is our customer's customer saying at uh, Helm and Titan or uh, by uh, or with another customer this is the case they would like to have their range with their great products and they would like to have uh, a 65 character short text um, no HTML formulation then they want to have classification and they want to have these uh, cropping feature for images at the same time and right now such requirements um, can be defined by our customers. They define it um, in a portal, a customer's portal. In this particular case, this is a uh, B2B portal. I think it's Shopware. Yes, and um, uh, the customer's customer says, I would like to have this catalog, and then our software uh, controls this in a headless way. So in the background, the catalog is generated and we push it back to this format. This can be various integrations. This can also be an integration in a variety of portals. And we've shown it here, uh, how um, Helaman Titan uh, uh, does it. They do it with an app. So I can register as a customer. I don't even realize that there's another software running in the background. Um, uh, this is only started in the background and then the data is um, actually uh, furnished back s so that uh, they are available for the customer's portal. This can be different things uh, to control. In this particular case it's a home page but it could also be different PIM systems where such uh, catalog generation tool is integrated and uh, the result then looks like this. The uh, censored customer case, the business case, in terms of development, this was really exciting because this customer said um, the status was we have uh, just generated a web press page for our uh, dealers and they can log in and we update every month all of the spreadsheets and uh, there are also files with uh, images but once a month one person was assigned uh, who took one week uh, at the end of the previous month to update all of the uh, information the tables then all of the packages were shoved to the web press page and then the dealers were able to download the EM card um, uh, and the images they, then they took the next step and said we will establish establish a shopware 6 shop as a customer or dealer portal rather there was no checkout and um, it was just an information portal where there was one area that was referred to as PIM and you were able to scroll through and look at product data and the next area was the uh, production the generation of electronic catalogs and they now offer BME, CAD, Excel, JSON or whatever 
and the dealers can actually compile the information they want to have included in this electronic catalog. And in this particular case, we integrated Catalog he uh, Express Headless. The dealer needed no UI. This is just a service. And through the REST API on our Shopper 6 connector, we connected with, uh, with Shopware. And the Catalog Express actually gets the data in the underground from the source systems and then builds the catalog and makes it available through Shopware. This means uh, some services were included but no UI. But then the next department joined and said, uh, well, we have a similar requirement, but from a different customer segment. They also need, uh, need, need uh, electronic catalogs, but they need a UI. And we have to be able to actively send them out. And uh, we will also want to be able to personalize these catalogs because the uh, customers or the dealers we serve with them can't or don't want to do it themselves. And this is why we offer the service that uh, includes the UI. We simply fringed it to the REST API, so to speak. <laughs> and um, the whole configuration resulted where you actually use several services from Catalog Express in various constellations, whether it's headless, whether it's with the UI, um, or whether there is a connector to shopware. And in this way, you serve various customers segments um, either with customers actually retrieving their data themselves or that you actually uh, compile the data and then push them to the uh, customer exactly you wanted to comment on this yes uh, yeah one on um, this is the scenario uh, and um, we have various uh, input and various output channels or channel customers feeds or whatever you want to refer to or you want to call it there is no consistent term for this yet and we actually provide the catalog express with the corresponding prerequisites uh, for the various scenarios in between. When we look at the requirement uh, of and the brief uh, by Helen and Titan and what was in it uh, for the customers, for the dealers. Well, we can serve um, the customer requirements. So the customers click their own requirements and compile them. And uh, we can uh, increase the frequency and uh, we can also serve all of the requirements, fulfill all of the requirements. Is, is this the alarm clock saying that there are only five minutes? No, this is my alarm clock. Good morning. Uh, for us, and um, this is the exciting bit uh, when you've uh, uh, implemented these principles, the customer uh, all of a sudden changes uh, their needs and saying, I want headless operation. And since we've built the architecture like this, this is not a problem for us because the application communicates with APIs anyway. So I can control, this, uh, control it in the headless way anyway. So uh, we only call up the API just the same way. And um, since we've built this architecture, we're super flexible and can cater to a wide variety of needs. Five minutes left. Yeah. Then, yeah, we should actually look at the system live. And just quickly on this one because uh, everybody's so exuberant about events. Service providers are not invited. You're excluded, unfortunately. Um, manufacturers, dealers, users are welcome to at the Produktgauden Gaudi at Sundern um, on the a mountain pasture. Uh, Michael, Gerd, Ebert, they're all welcome. Uh, the Akineo via Medici uh, uh, colleagues and print is of course also a host and shopware we're organizing this together with Atlantic for the second time now it's in the middle of nowhere 
um, but uh, at your leisure, you can relax there and uh, really do a uh, product data deep dive in a different atmosphere. So scan the code, please, right away and register as uh, fast as possible because there are only a few um, uh, places left. Any questions that have... Are, are you part of the Mach Alliance? Are you a member? No, no, honestly speaking. Well, uh, the principles underlying it, fine, yeah, uh, they make sense. But I think it's uh, really outrageously expensive. We learned yesterday that uh, this is uh, um, included in some invitations to Tenta. They were pretty fast turning this into a cash cow. Yeah, they, for, they've been around for only two years. Yeah, It's getting more complicated by the day uh, to become a member. Mm. They're making money with it. <laughs> Quite a bit of money. And uh, uh, they even do certifications. They're experts. Uh, they look at the APIs. They look at the documentation. Uh, it was difficult two years ago, but it's even more difficult than today. Yeah, and, and there's an annual certification. Yeah, okay. Ye uh, let's uh, do a quick one because there's not a lot of time left. Well, it's about profiles here. This could be customer ABC. And here within the profile, I define the data he wants from me. So to the left, I define all of the uh, data sources, a um, combination of PIM, ERP, and maybe an Excel spreadsheet. And on the right-hand side, I can define the target format. We talked about shopware, but it could also be Amazon, and I select this now, and then I have the XML structure here that uh, Amazon expects uh, at its API. And then I can um, select one where I know it contains data. Uh, we won't be able to, to let the system run, but... Um, this was an, a simple CSV, some article descriptions and some added information. And then I can tag, the, oh, map the data. But I, I'm doing this randomly now. It, it makes no sense what I'm doing, just to show the functionality. Uh, but I can uh, define which values from my source are linked uh, to the uh, source, uh, to the target, sorry. So, f so various sources, assets of the source, it can be married uh, with uh, a target. We can also save uh, audits and checks. This is standard checks as we have an industrial background. Um, there's lots of beam cut and item, but here for the distribution side, I either, either use the services, but uh, uh, if I want to address the SFTP server, uh, then I can actually enter my access data to actually come up with the REST API definition. This is the area at the bottom. And then I can define my endpoint. So for my customer, I don't remember the name. Uh, ABC, yeah, the, the customer ABC makes no difference. Um, this is the end uh, point name, and then I say this is uh, the data. I can define the data, and then I can say, okay, I. What have we got here? Um, the messages. So for each message sent to Amazon, this can be checked at the endpoint. And this is the information that I can get. Then I can embed various structures in the UL, URL, data, for instance, or I want to have the API 
and this is the URL that I can later use to access the data. And then I would like to have an open API description for this and I can have various versions. I can even um, save policies, um, who is allowed to use this data and pass it on. So this is all I have to do to say this is the uh, complete definition of my endpoint. I make the process run and the endpoint is readily available. This is all I have to do. And then this is all available the way I showed it in the mapping. So this was basically um, in a fast forward mode what you can do with the system. Thanks very much for your attention.